Hello Taurus friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my report, Taurus March 2021 Astrology Must Knows. This month is my favorite month of not only 2021, but even looking back to 2020 from the astrological perspective. We have needed a month like this with aspects like this for a really long time. So I'm going to go into all the factors as to why this is my favorite month of the whole year and for quite a while before and possibly even a while to come. So then we're going to go into some other additional specific tourist must knows. So the first must know about this month in general is that we have way more sweet aspects than salty ones. And when this happens, it really sets the mood for our experience it, from a general perspective. It has, we haven't had any months where all the aspects were much better to this degree compared to the ones that could be annoying. Even of the ones that could be annoying, several of those could flip the other direction and actually turn out to be sweet instead. So it's just a very rare, um, positive flowing, amazing month full of synchronicities and magic. The second reason why I'm so excited about this month is that we're not getting heavily dogged by outer planet aspects coming together in a difficult fashion. We do have a little bit of carryover from the Saturn Uranus uh, square in February, which is kind of phasing out and into the backdrop and will be a player this year. It will happen again in the middle of the year. It will happen again towards the end of the year, but we're not in a direct lineup of those, um, that configuration in March. And that is unique and different compared to a lot of previous months where we've had outer planets slamming together and creating global chaos. And that goes down to the individual level and difficulties and heaviness and a lot of uncertainty. So another reason why I love this month is because we don't have personal planet retrogrades. Now, while we do have a little layover, a carryover of the Mercury having gone direct on February 20th, Mercury is going to be a little sleepy until close to mid month in March. But with every day we get into March, those effects are just dissolving away, dissolving away. And so that makes this month, especially the second half of it, free and clear for doing important things. Anything important, launches, um, big decisions, contracts, moves, things like that. And also it's going to open things up for making a lot of plans. Because of all of the things going on in the world, which have been because of the things going on in the stars, we haven't been able to make a lot of plans. Everything has been cast into uncertainty. And even though we had a little bit of opening up of the stars at the end of November, all of December and the first half of January, those open stars for trying to move forward, trying to do these important things, make these commitments, were, were really um, clouded by the outer planet transits. Remember, outer planets take a long time to move around. So when they come together, they have these mega impacts that echo out through every area of life down from the individual to the global level. And they last a really long time. They last much longer than just the day that they happen. So it sets a mood for months and even sometimes years when these active players are in process. So you know, the open stars that we had in the December, January timeframe were clouded by the heaviness of the other outer planet clashes. So there was forward movement, but there was a lot of, you know, hesitance and contingencies and things like that. And plus in December and January, we had the eclipses, which really shaded this forward moving energy that was concurring at this, you know, at that time. But now, as we get deeper into March, certainly the second half of March, all of April, we're in this time that's free from personal planet retrogrades and their shadow periods and the planets are going to start moving into Aries which brings zest and momentum and forward movement so we will likely see forward movement that we haven't seen of the likes that we haven't seen for a very long time instigated in March and into April. When personal planets are retrograde it brings a lot of uncertainty and it casts things into question so Anything that was trying to kind of get steady or get sure, even into January, towards the end of January and into February, everything got called into question, got put up in the air, not able to plan, you're not able to be sure. And that is a mode that we got really used to in 2020. And we got kind of thrown back into here at the beginning of the year um, after a brief reprieve. 
but that's something that we're not going to have to deal with. So with every day we go into March, there will be more clarity, there will be more certainty, there will be more capacity to make plans. We're going to be able to start seeing more than two feet in front of us. Being able to just see what's right in front of you is a beautiful spiritual practice that was forced by these difficult events because it really cultivated the energy of we're right here, right now, being where we're at. And at the same time, it is nice to also be able to see into the future and start to, to work on things where you can have a, a wider view of what's happening. And that's exactly what's going to happen as the month develops. The last reason why I'm so excited about this month is because we are actually wedged in the middle of the, of the eclipse seasons. So the eclipse season that was in December and, Jan and um, the end of November, December into January, we've now kind of phased more where that's more internal and kind of going on in the backdrop and we're not going to hit another eclipse season in a very deep profound way until may and june you'll see touches of it in april which we'll talk about in the april report but here in march we're dancing between the intensity of the eclipse seasons and that makes it just a time of rest a time of you know kind of catching our breath at the same time as being prepared to start moving forward Okay, so let's talk about some things that are specific for Taurus. Um, let's talk about the energies of Pisces. Okay, so first to, to see how this relates to Taurus, we have to understand the nature of the energy of Pisces because that's a major factor for the month. We've got Mercury, the Sun, and Venus spending time in Pisces, and that's going to set a mood of water. For Taurus placements, this makes a 60 degree angle, which is the angle I call the, um, the opportunity angle or the ingredients on a counter angle. So if you have all the ingredients to make a pie, you've got to then make the pie, right? And that's what this 60 degree angle is all about. So for Taurus, opportunities will come this month and you will have to do something with them. And if you're not sure what to do, let some of the, the month wear on and then you'll, you'll likely start to have your clarity mid month towards the end of the month if it's not really clear at the beginning of what to do with these opportunities that come in or had come in during the retrograde time. And so that's a favorable angle. So the domination of the personal planets, the ones closest to us, are in a favorable angle for Taurus. So that sets an additional layer of the mood for your particular sign. And in general, Pisces energies bring a whole bunch of opportunities. Now, while they can, we'll talk about some of the off side of it first, it can cast some confusion and kind of be retrograde like in the way of, you know, just things being nebulous, things not really gelling, not really certain about things, being hesitant. You know, there, there might be some of that sort of doubt or self doubt or doubt coming from outside for you right now. But again, as the month goes on, this will start to shift. But the plus side of Pisces, the things that you really have opportunities to develop this month have to do with getting better sleep. Sleep is the cornerstone for great health. It's often ignored. People will joke about how little they sleep and we have to get our sleeping on track at least most of the time because that's when we heal and regenerate and that's a lot of disease prevention comes from being well rested and Pisces focuses this. So if you have an issue with sleep, then this could be a time where you could find solutions and where you might be motivated to find solutions. Also, if you're into lucid dreaming or using your dreams as ways to communicate with you know, uh, loved ones that had passed on or with the divine or with angels or with you know, your, your higher self, this is a time where you can do a lot of intense dream work and you might notice on its own, this stuff is just happening without you having even real realized it. It may activate your dream sector in a big way. Also, anything on the topic of meditation, establishing a meditation routine, or getting deeper into spiritual work or spiritual healing, this is an amazing time. So, you know, schedule your um, psychotherapy or your hypnotherapy or your past life regressions for this time, and it will enhance the nature of that type of inner work. Or if it's just your personal processing, it can also be enhanced at this time. This is a wonderful time for having a retreat or taking quiet time or taking just time where you're away from a lot of static or chaos. And because Mars is moving into Gemini, we'll go much more into this here in a minute, but travel opportunities are going to start increasing for many, many, many people. And so if you have a chance to take a retreat or take a vacation or take a trip, this time could be amazing for that. Also, Pisces energies are perfect for detoxifying. So shifting your diet, you know, 
doing anything that has to do with clearing out congestion from your house, from your relationships, from your body, um, lymphatic drainage, lymphatic clearing, there are lots of opportunities this month for focusing on that and you can make a lot of headway with that. Even just things as simple as detox baths, Epsom salt baths, you know, something inexpensive, but that you do consistently over this time, that can really, really be extra beneficial with the energies that are going on from Pisces. Okay, so now let's get into the areas of the chart that are going to be highlighted for Taurus. And that's going to be very strongly your 11th house and your 12th house. So let's talk about what that means. Your 11th house being activated means that networking opportunities can blaze in a really major way. Chances to connect with people that are like-minded, whether it's online or in person. We can't really tell how each individual is going to experience the potentials, and there are karmic filters based on our location, our you know geographic areas, that and just and other karmic factors, our personal charts, as to how influences from the stars filter down to our personal experience. There are a lot of filters that it has to go through, which is why things are not the same for every single person, but there's definitely going to be an increase in social energy. So whether that's in person or whether that's online, it doesn't matter. But for many people, things are going to be opening up, um, especially as the month goes on and into April, where connecting with people is going to be a really big deal. So whatever ways you can do that with the mandates or situations that you have present at the time of these energies, it's still there for you. So anyone who you can connect with who can help you. So basically, if you need help with something, someone you know might have the answer, and that may come through networking, and it may come through social media, and it may be related to an internet-based project if you're wanting to launch a website or something like that. This period of time is getting really ripe and ready for those type of things, especially mid-month and on. Okay, and the networking thing is true the whole month. As the first half of March it has a little bit of the um, hangover of the of the Mercury retrograde, people from your past and connections from your past may feature more strongly in that first half of the month, and the second half of the month opens even more to new people. Okay, so this also has to do with humanitarian efforts. So if you've been wanting to volunteer or do a community-based project, start a community garden, you know, anything that has to do with community relations is going to be highlighted for Taurus with these Pisces movements. Now, as the month goes on, the sector that's going to start to be highlighted even more is your 12th house, which is the same house that's, that rules Pisces, which is all of this stuff about the sleep and the meditation and the detoxification and you know all of those things that we listed. So you have that energy being accentuated for multiple reasons, so it's going to come up in a lot of different ways. Also the topic of forgiveness. Forgiving people, even if they don't deserve it, can often be a catalyst for a massive amount of karma burning, including getting out of actual financial debt. And this Pisces energy is bringing to you the opportunity to see where forgiveness has to be applied for self and to other people, and how that might start to free you up with places where you were bound. Okay, that could be the critical ingredient. All right, so let's talk about Mars now. Mars is moving into Gemini, and that's noteworthy, so it's going to spend March and April moving through Gemini. Mars, I call the border collie of the zodiac, and that's because it's just really busy, it gets really hot on something, it's really obsessive. And so wherever it goes, it brings your focus and your energy and your stamina and your, you know, um, it brings it into the forefront and your motivations, your ambitions in that area. So that area is going to be your finances. And this is going to be true for all Taurus placements. For those of you who are later in the sign, so we'll say like even May born, you might start to have this stagger, so it will start to be true for you in March, but the later you are in the sign, the more this energy is going to be brought in in April. Okay, so this has to do with your income, your personal income, your personal financial situation. Your income having to do with like how much money you make, asking those type of questions. You might get really motivated to raise your rates or to get a raise at work. You might be really motivated to start a business or to enhance your business. And all of that is really well supported at this time. Even savings more or getting a better budget or doing anything having to do with cutting out the fat of seeing where you're spending or wasting money 
so that you wind up having more income because you're saving income from places that went that it wasn't serving you in the best way. All of that type of evaluation is very much um, the type of thing you're going to be very interested in during this time. And for those of you who are minded, you know, environmentally, things like get becoming more, um, you know, lessening your imprint or becoming more sustainable, those type of topics for many people, you're going to get super hot on that. You might be making a garden, you might be getting some solar charging batteries for devices or, you know, anything that is along those lines. Also, things having to do with making things with your hands, like physical labor, physical um, creation of crafts or things like that could come up in a really big way. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about, I'm gonna go back real quick to um, talk about the Pisces new moon on March 13th. That is going to bring even more energy of the Piscean things we discussed, but I wanna point it out because since it isn't a nice angle for you, there are, opportunities that can come for every Taurus placement and it will be increased for those of you the closer to May 13th you are. Okay, so we'll say from May 8th through May 18th, you are likely to get extra blessings from this new moon and the closer to May 13th you are, the more intense those blessings may be. Now, if your birthday is not in that range, you may have other Taurus placements that are in the 18 to 28 degree range because the degree of the new moon is at 23 degrees. So I put a five degree orb in either direction. So we've got between um, 18 degrees and 28 degrees if you have a Taurus placement in that range. So my reports are always for you whether Taurus is your moon, Taurus is your rising, Taurus is your sun. And I do always suggest that you run a free birth chart online. Eventually I'll have the capacity to do this on one of my sites, but until then, just search for how to run a free birth chart online, run your birth chart, and then see what where your planets and your degrees are because these degrees can start to make more of a difference when honing it in. When things are happening out here in the cosmos, we tend to feel them more when they're in a mathematical connection. It's like a, a beam right to our personal experience. That's why sometimes you'll resonate more with certain things going on in the stars and then not as much in, in other times. I mean, the general transits bring a certain mood and everybody, nobody's really exempt from that. But these aspects like these um, new moons and full moons and all of the other aspects that occur. You will feel those more deeply if they're connected to your personal mathematical points. Everything in astrology is math. Everything in life is math, really. And I talk about this um, in my book, Planetology, How to Align with the Natural Rhythms of the Universe. I have a nice grid showing how the golden ratio, phi, is present in the placement of the stars. You know, to me, what that says is that if the math is behind everything and the math is the sure thing, right, it's linked to something predictable, then that means that there's coherence. The golden ratio is at the root of everything. There's coherence, there's benevolence. So to me, that says there's a benevolent source. And so sometimes when we get overstressed and, you know, Taurus people tend to have a lot of responsibilities, all the earth signs or people who have a lot of placements there tend to, you know, be the hard working people holding everything up. And sometimes it's it's easy to, to forget about the magic and forget about the divine and forget about synchronicity through the daily things, the drudge of things that have to be done. But this is a time where spirit's wanting to remind you of the coherence that is behind the seeming chaos and to help you to just trust a little more and surrender and just know that there's way more to what's going on than we can see. But when you tune in, you can really feel that it's there and that this is the truth. Okay, so something else that I wanna talk about that's specific for Taurus has to do with the energy of investments. And this has to do with um, a transiting south node. So there, there are things that want to be worked out also in your emotional investments. So your intimacy, like your deep intimate relationships, your um, connections with your shared finances, and also your connection to like spiritual processes, spiritual principles, spiritual studies. Those type of things are looking to have bur karma burned off of them now and to really fine tune that area of your life. So questioning where you're investing your emotional energy, where you're investing your financial energy, you know, having plans for even like, um, you know, estate things, 
legal things having to do with your money. Those kind of things have some energy around that and including, you know, family um, connections and your spousal connections and connections with partnerships, bosses or um, not bosses, collaborators or partners within your work. So, you know, some of you might be experiencing some weird or stressful things in those areas because this karma is looking to be burned off. And the more you can get the lesson, like get the message, the more that karma can be satisfied and you can move on from it. So one of the best ways to clear a karma through the opportunity of a challenge is to really try to, to see where you could be doing better, where you might have gone awry in this area, or what it might be reflecting for you. Like maybe someone's doing something inexcusable and that really has nothing to do with you. But is there a spirit of something that they're doing that you could apply to your life? Like for instance, let's say you're furious about how someone in power, whether it's a pow like power in your relationships, power in your family, or power in politics, if you're having a real charge to how power is being used, it's possible that you might have not used your power in the best way in the past and maybe you haven't forgiven yourself about it or maybe you are doing something in another area of your life where maybe you're not using your power in the best way and this this angst about it with somebody else is kind of trying to pull that for you to focus on so this is a very deep spiritual process but it is something that can actually profoundly and positively affect your finances and your debt and your savings and your whole financial picture back to kind of the same idea we talked about with the forgiveness but it's linked in another area of your chart these types of questions and topics are really active for you at this time so in general there's just so much to celebrate this month there are beautiful aspects with pisces that are extra also extra nice for taurus in in particular and i hope that this month with all the wonderful potentials, bring some really amazing things for you. Okay, so if you'd like even more information about the astrology ahead and how you can make the most of it, first go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. You'll see a little note there that says, Dear Friend, I'm Annie Botticelli, and it will have a sign up right there on the front page. That's where you sign up for my free email newsletter. You'll want to sign up for this because you will get delivered into your inbox one month early each month my write-up, a comprehensive write-up of the month ahead, including all the sweet dates, all the salty dates, what you might expect with those, and lots of details about what you can expect for the month and what to be aware of and what to celebrate. Okay, while you're at AnnieHelpsYou.com, click in the right top corner under blog, and I've got all different types of blogs, but of note here with this astrology forecast is my astrology blog, so you can check that out. Then go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com and note, it, note that in the notes underneath this video, if you click on the little more arrow underneath the video, it will reveal all of the, the notes with these actual links so that you don't have to just remember what I'm saying because they're all, always underneath the video. So you can go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com, get my written horoscopes for each sign up one month early as usual. I like to give you time for planning. Also, I've got extensive different categories for healthy living and astrology kissed living. So herbal teas for each sign, yoga for each sign as the sun moves through the signs. So you'll want to check that out. It's a beautiful site. Then definitely also go to loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. That's my school, Luminous Life Multiversity. And check out the free courses that I have for you. And also you can see my paid courses. If you think I put a lot into my free resources, then wow, you should see what goes into my paid courses. You can check out my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course. Even if you don't wanna do astrology professionally, if you wanna learn astrology because you love it and you wanna learn how to use it for yourself, for your own self-development and help your family and friends, or if you do wanna do it professionally, this course is crazy comprehensive and it will prepare you to do whatever you wanna do with astrology. So you can see that at loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. And the last thing is to make sure to get my book, my new book, Planetology, How to Align with the Natural Rhythms of the Universe. It's in every major bookseller it all in every Barnes and Noble, every Books a Million in the whole United States. It's also everywhere extensively um, throughout the world. You can get it pretty much anywhere. And it will help you to do just that, align with the natural rhythms of the universe. It's a very comprehensive book. And you'll go back to it time and time again 
for resources on how to use all of the astrological potentials in the best way. You can get it on Audible, you can get it on ebook, and you can get the beautiful hardcover version. So I hope you have a wonderful month, and I'll see you next month. Bye!